So now that we know about the basics of the envelope generator, uh, we're going to talk about some more advanced uses. Um, we didn't talk about this last mode here where we have self. Um, so that basically turns the envelope generator for all intents and purposes into an oscillator. Um, depending on these sliders, it can be a low frequency oscillator or it can be an audio rate oscill oscillator. So now I've got an envelope that runs independent of the pulsar, which can have its own uses. So there what I was doing is using the pulsar to generate, you know, a polyrhythm against the self-oscillating envelope generator. Um, some other uses, you know, envelope doesn't just have to go to volume, it can go anywhere, right? Uh, so we could assign an envelope to timbre, so I've got this self-oscillator. <laughs> And then I'm going to steal something from Todd Barton. I hope he doesn't kill me for this. You can send an inverted envelope generator self-oscillating to wave shape. And then we put it in square wave, and then what's going to happen is this is going to alternate between the square wave and the timbre the more complex wave shape. Which is just super cool, and he's got all the best ideas, to be honest. And we can take this into audio. Um, you know, borrowing from that audio rate idea, we could use this to kind of generate AM. Uh, but you find it doesn't really do that <laughs> so well. Okay. Um, other things to think about. This is, to all intents and purposes, an oscillator at this point. Um, so... If you want to go, you know, a real experiment, I'm going to take the envelope generator out. I'm going to go to my conversion box over here. And this box just converts to Eurorack. So I'm taking a banana, I'm getting a Eurorack out, and I'm going to go to a delay. And we have a third oscillator for all intents and purposes coming out of this thing. sliders to control the wave shape. And you can, I'm using a delay, like a weird delay, and we can make sort of monster soundscapes. that helps.